Recently, a serious incident involving Air India Flight 171 has left the public and aviation experts deeply shocked. In less than a minute after takeoff, this Boeing 787 experienced a dual engine failure and was unable to maintain the required altitude. According to preliminary reports accessed by several international news outlets, including the Wall Street Journal, Reuters, and the Air Current, one of the most notable points is that both fuel control switches of the aircraft were moved to the cutoff position almost immediately after leaving the runway. What exactly happened in the cockpit at that moment? This is not just a question for investigators, but a matter of significant concern for the entire aviation industry. In today's analysis, we will walk you through three key layers of the issue. What happened? How did it happen? And why could it have happened? What happened? A technical data perspective. Recently, an aviation event has drawn considerable attention from international aviation experts involving a Boeing 787 operated by Air India. Although official reports are still being finalized, various sources from Western media and initial technical analyses indicate the aircraft lost thrust from both engines just seconds after takeoff. If confirmed, this information could point to one of the rare cases of dual engine failure during the departure phase, a scenario that all pilots are trained to handle, but which is extremely uncommon in modern flight operations. Rat system. The first sign of trouble. One of the key indicators used to assess the severity of an in-flight emergency is the deployment of the ram air turbine or RAT, which in this case occurred almost immediately after the aircraft lifted off the ground. Ram Air Turbine is a backup safety device installed on modern commercial aircraft. It is designed to activate only during emergencies, specifically when both engines fail to provide electrical and hydraulic power. When that happens, the Ram Air Turbine automatically extends into the airstream and uses the airflow to generate a minimal amount of electricity and hydraulic pressure. This helps maintain the operation of essential systems, such as flight controls. Under normal conditions, the ram air turbine does not activate, especially not while the aircraft is still flying at low altitude shortly after takeoff. It is typically reserved for high-altitude emergencies when no other backup power sources are available. Therefore, if the ram air turbine is deployed just seconds after takeoff, it strongly suggests a critical failure has occurred, possibly the simultaneous loss of thrust from both engines. What technical causes might be involved? In the aftermath of any aviation incident, the first approach to evaluating causes always comes from a technical standpoint, especially when there is no full black box data or official crew testimony available. In this case, multiple scenarios have been suggested by experts to explain the simultaneous loss of both engines, including poor fuel quality, which could cause both engines to shut down suddenly if they shared a contaminated or out-of-spec fuel source, failure in the electronic control system, FADEC. FADEC governs the automatic management of engine performance parameters. A fault here, though extremely rare, could impair engine responsiveness. Flight control software malfunction. Electronic fly-by-wire systems translate cockpit inputs to control surfaces. If this system malfunctions, it could result in faulty command routing or disrupted engine input. However, according to initial analyses based on simulator data and similar system inspections, these hypotheses have largely been ruled out. The reason is that conditions such as total electrical failure or hydraulic loss typically do not result in a complete loss of thrust from both engines within just a few seconds of takeoff. Moreover, in simulator tests at training centers, aircraft remained capable of stable flight even when one of the above systems was intentionally disabled. How did it happen? Operational Mechanisms and Training Standards When an aviation incident occurs, the first thing to examine is not only the consequence, but also how the incident unfolded. In the case of Air India Flight 171, in addition to the data regarding the loss of thrust from both engines, 
Another detail that drew special attention from investigators was the status of the aircraft's fuel control system. On modern aircraft like the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, fuel supply to the engines is controlled through two main switches, commonly known as fuel control switches. Each switch governs one engine. How fuel switches work. Not as simple as flipping a light switch. Though called switches, these are not basic push buttons. Each fuel control switch has a mechanical design to prevent accidental operation, including a detente that locks the switch in the run position throughout the flight. To move the switch from run to cutoff, meaning to shut off fuel supply to the engine, a pilot must firmly grasp the switch by hand, pull it up past the safety detente, then push it down into the cutoff position. This design prevents accidental movement due to turbulence, bumping, or rubbing against other objects in the cockpit. According to some former pilots and system experts, this type of switch cannot change position randomly, making accidental operation extremely unlikely without deliberate input. When is it permissible to shut off both switches? In the entire operational manual of the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, there is only one emergency scenario that allows the crew to deliberately move both fuel control switches to the cutoff position while airborne. That is when both engines have already stopped working, a situation known as dual engine flameout, and the crew must perform an in flight dual engine restart. Why this procedure exists under normal conditions, the fuel system remains in the run state, allowing continuous fuel flow to the combustion chambers in the jet engines. However, if both engines shut down temporarily, due to loss of fuel pressure, incorrect fuel air mixture, or transient electronic faults, restarting them requires a full reset of the fuel feed path. To do this safely, the crew must reset the fuel supply system, similar to how users often restart an electronic device. Standard procedure in a dual engine restart scenario. Move both switches from run to cutoff. This action cuts off all fuel currently going to the engines, clearing any hanging states or inconsistencies in the combustion cycle. Immediately return both switches to run. At this point, the fuel system will reinitiate the fuel flow and begin an auto relight process, either through automatic igniters or aided by ram airflow as the aircraft glides. Monitor fuel pressure, fan speeds, N1 and 2, exhaust gas temperature, EGT and wait for stable indicators confirming engine recovery. Most important, the time spent in the cutoff state should only last a few seconds, just long enough for the system to receive the reset command. Keeping the switches in cutoff longer than this can result in a start sequence loss, making engine restart impossible. In such a case, the aircraft would be entirely unable to regain thrust, an extremely dangerous situation, especially when it occurs at low altitude. What makes this situation so unusual? According to some media sources quoting the preliminary report, both fuel control switches were found in the cutoff position and had not returned to run at the time the RAT system was activated. If confirmed by black box data, this could suggest that either the restart procedure was interrupted midway or the switches were moved to cutoff outside the boundaries of standard procedure. In either case, this indicates the incident did not unfold in accordance with the normal operating architecture of the Boeing 787. Why could this have happened? When the human factor comes into focus. Once technical hypotheses are gradually ruled out, the focus of the investigation often shifts to human operations, which account for a significant proportion of past aviation incidents. Possibility of improper procedure. Investigation still ongoing. At this stage, there is no public evidence suggesting that cockpit actions were intentional or the result of a mistake. However, as many observers have pointed out, both fuel control switches being fixed in the cutoff position is a scenario that rarely arises under normal flight conditions. Many questions have been raised. Could this have been an instinctive response to a technical malfunction? 
Or was it the result of an unstable mental state or lack of alertness at that moment? While answers are still pending the final report, this is a moment for the aviation community to once again reflect on an important, though often overlooked, factor. Psychological pressure in the cockpit, a topic that needs more serious discussion. According to several aviation psychology studies published over the past decade, commercial pilots, despite being highly trained, are still individuals working in a high-pressure environment with the following characteristics. Long working hours, frequent time zone shifts, separation from family, lack of long-term social connection, huge responsibility, while not always having opportunities to share or receive support. Some airlines in Europe and North America have started implementing mental health support programs for pilots, including regular psychological evaluations, anonymous internal helplines, and voluntary one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions. However, according to many experts, encouraging pilots to proactively speak up when facing mental health issues remains difficult due to fears of impacting their career records or being judged by colleagues. One key point, this is an industry-wide issue, not the fault of any one individual. When an incident involving human factors occurs, it's crucial to approach it from a systemic perspective. Training, support, oversight, and internal culture. Responsibility should not be entirely placed on one individual, especially when full data is unavailable and the psychological context has not been clarified. Comparing Air India 171 with Air Transat Flight 236. One of the most clearly comparable incidents to that of Air India 171 is Air Transat Flight 236, which occurred on August 24, 2001. The Airbus A330-243, carrying 293 passengers and 13 crew members, was en route from Toronto, Canada, to Lisbon, Laos, Portugal, when it encountered a rare scenario, complete fuel exhaustion in both engines while flying over the Atlantic Ocean, hundreds of kilometers from land. The incident began when a maintenance technician in Canada replaced a part in the fuel system with a component that didn't match in size. This caused a silent fuel leak through a pipeline. During the flight, the crew noted a fuel imbalance between the wings, but initially assumed it was a sensor error, a scenario previously encountered in simulator training. As fuel depletion became critical, the right engine and then the left engine completely shut down. The aircraft entered a dead stick condition, no engine thrust at all, relying solely on gravity and aerodynamic glide. To maintain control, the RAT, Ram Air Turbine, an emergency wind-powered energy device, was activated. With few options ahead, Captain Robert Peach and First Officer Dirk de Jaeger glided the A330 for 19 minutes, over 120 kilometers, landing safely at La Hesse Air Base in the Azores. At the time of landing, the aircraft had lost all primary electrical and hydraulic systems, with the landing gear and brakes functioning at minimal capacity. Even so, the crew landed the nearly 200-ton aircraft without engines, without radar, and without navigation, using only skill and reflexes, something rarely achieved even in simulation training. No lives were lost. 18 people sustained minor injuries. All 306 on board survived. ICAO and several aviation experts called it one of the finest displays of piloting in modern aviation history. Key similarities with Air India 171 Dual engine loss Both cases experienced complete thrust loss, putting the aircraft in a passive glide dependent on emergency systems. RAT activation In both incidents, the Ram Air Turbine served as the aircraft's final lifeline, helping maintain core control systems. Misinterpretation of early warnings in both cockpits, the initial warning signs were not fully understood, leading to delays in early responses, a common human error under abnormal circumstances. But the critical difference, and the defining factor, the biggest difference lies in the time and space allowed for response. Air Transat 236 experienced the failure at cruising altitude, 
around 39,000 feet, almost 12 km hours. This gave the crew about 15 to 20 minutes to process, decide, and act. Air India 171, in contrast, had just lifted off, under 60 seconds into the flight. At such a low altitude, with unstable speed and minimal maneuvering room, any misstep could result in total loss of control. The story of Air Transat E-236 clearly shows that when engines are lost, everything depends on the crew. Awareness, situational analysis, and control skills are critical to survival. However, Air India 171 represents a harsher reality where the window for response was compressed to a few seconds and standard procedures had virtually no time to unfold. This raises broader questions about training protocols for thrust loss immediately after takeoff and the psychological readiness of pilots in those first seconds when everything spirals beyond control. The incident involving Air India 171 is still under investigation. So far, no official conclusion has been released but preliminary reports and early technical analyses have drawn strong attention from industry professionals. These indicate that there is no clear sign of major malfunction in the aircraft systems or engines. Instead, both fuel switches were recorded in the cutoff position, something nearly impossible without deliberate human input. With both engines shut down, the fuel switches turned off, and no restart attempt made, the aircraft was left without thrust, a highly dangerous situation. This is not just a technical issue, but one involving human actions and real-time decision-making in unexpected emergencies. Compared to the Air Trans AT-236 incident, where the crew had over 20 minutes to act, Air India 171 had only a few seconds to react. And that made all the difference. This event raises a vital question. Are pilots, current training programs and cockpit systems adequately prepared to handle sudden, critical emergencies? Share your thoughts in the comments below, where every perspective is welcomed and respected. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss future content, tap the bell to get notifications, and share this video if you believe the message is worth spreading. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. See you again in the next topic.